Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our big game webcast. We're going to have a little bit of fun right now. Joining me for the next 30 minutes or so, our two local NFL legends, Marty Amsler, a bossy grad who played with the Bears, Packers, and Bengals. Marty also played collegiately at the University of Evansville. Marty is on what would be uh, the TV screen left, and he was also the first Evansville player to be drafted into the NFL. And Sam Ball, a Henderson native who played in two Super Bowls, Sam won Super Bowl V with the Colts, and Sam also, by the way, played with Kentucky. He's got that spiffy UK uh, shirt on here, and he was also a second-round <laughs> pick by the Jets. So if anyone knows in the tri-state, knows about the NFL, it's these two gentlemen. I love those old-school pitchers, by the way. Uh, Sam was an offensive <laughs> lineman. Marty was a defensive lineman. And, uh, again, appreciate you guys both being in here with us tonight. You're both from the area. Bossy grad, yes. Henderson County grad. Did you know each other back in high school? Did you play against each other back in high school? You were both uh, playing around the same time. No, no, we wouldn't even cross the cross the bridge to come over. Yeah, we Kentucky. played against Mount Vernon. We played against Big Nail, if I remember that right, when I was in high school. But that's about all. Did you guys know each other? Oh, no. I mean, those are two pretty big high school football stars back in the day, and really didn't know each other. We didn't meet each other until we played in the NFL. Well, that was going to be my next question. Uh, you were both in the NFL in the mm -hmm. mid-60s. Did you play against each other during your time in the NFL? I played right tackle. He played right in. So I played against all the all pros. <laughs> <laughs> I picked out some really good guys to play against. Deacon Jones and Carl Eller and That's Willie Davis. Pretty big names right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the main thing you got to understand, the only reason that Sam is reasonably good-looking today reasonably. and not retarded. Yeah, reasonably. And not retarded and all that because he didn't have to play across from me. And if you look at us on the, sc on the screen, I'm a little bit older than Sam. I'm 76, but you know, who's the better looking of the two? Well, did you guys, did you guys ever play in the same games? Yeah, well, did your, sure. team, did oh, your yeah. teams meet up against sure. each other? Oh, yeah. Well, okay, and what do you remember about those games? Give, tell, I, give me a little bit of fun <laughs> those games that you played. It. My rookie year, we played the Bears in Soldier Field. I was on a kickoff team. Lou Michaels, our, our kickoff guy, kicked it out of bounds. Back in those days, he backed up five yards and kicked it again. So we backed it up five yards. I'm running R4. I mean, this big old body's just chunking it down the field fast as I can. I think, I think Marty remembers this. I think Marty knows where the story's no, there going. Was a no, I don't. I don't. <laughs> there was a kamikaze pilot with this big C on the side back of his helmet. <laughs> Seven weeks later, they took the cast off of my leg. Oh, my gosh. And, and I also had uh, tickets to the World Series, and the Baltimore Orioles lost to four straight games. Oh. <laughs> it wasn't a very good weekend. That doesn't sound like it. <laughs> what do you remember about that game, Artie? Do you remember much about it? I wasn't around for that one. Oh, you weren't around in that game? I thought you guys no, were playing against each other. No, but we played against each other in 67. The Colts came to Chicago. We played in Wrigley Field. And that's that's... That's key. We played in Wrigley Field because there were a lot of teams that played in uh, baseball stadiums, didn't they, Sam? Oh, yeah. And, well, the uh, Colts did. They played both. The Orioles and the Colts played in the same stadium. Yeah. And I've heard you talk about the Wrigley Field, playing in Wrigley Field uh, before. That had to be a, a, <clears throat> an awesome experience uh, to, to play at such a, even, I'm assuming in the 60s, it was still a historic park. It was a lot of good memories. I'd like to go back and see Wrigley Field because I understand it's I don't, really changed. No, I, I, I never played there. You said I did, but I didn't. Oh, yes, you I, did. No, I didn't. I, I played at Soldier Field. And I did play in the Yankee Stadium against the Giants when Fran Tarkin was quarterbacking. So that's pretty neat. So I've played in some pretty unique venues. Sam, I don't want to dis I don't disagree with you, but you know what? You, I remember from the scouting report that Sam Ball, right offensive tackle, number 73. Look how, look how good I am at remembering that. First controversy of the night. There's no controversy. Randall, the boy should have wore a helmet. <laughs> well, let's talk about the NFL. How has it changed uh, since when you guys played? Obviously, uh, a lot more media and the game has just exploded. Uh, what are some things that stand 6, out? 6,000 media people are at this year's Super Bowl. That, that's, yeah, that's That's, that's unbelievable. Yeah, the equipment has changed. The shoulder pads they wear now look like quarterback shoulder pads, little bitty old things. We had these monster pads come out to here. And the helmets, when I played in college, were Riddell helmets. That's where they invented the term ring your bell. There was a web and then plastic. 
about that much daylight, and they were bad news. But now these helmets they got today are unbelievable. Well, Sam, that was like that, was a, that ribbon went all the way around the inside was the same thing that they had in Army helmets. It was the same thing. Well, what stands out in your mind the most, Marty, about the difference between uh, the NFL in the 60s and, and, and today? It could be equipment, the way the game is yeah, uh, covered. Like, like, like Sam said, 6,000 media credentials. You could, turn a, yeah, you could turn around and you could kind of kind of adjust your equipment. If we, most of our stuff came from Wilson. And Wilson had, a plant, Wilson had a plant in Chicago. And I kept getting beat up in the, in the rib area. Because whenever you rush the passer, you'd have your hands straight up. And boy, I'll tell you what, your, your ribs took a licking. Well, they ended up putting a strap around, the ins, around my uh, shoulder pads to keep them from, from hitting the, the, um, the ribs and have them so sore. And then the other thing was that you see nowadays you know, you sit with the helmets mm -hmm. and you do the chin strap. All we had was just a chin strap that came around and snapped. Well, I kept having problems with my with my helmet tilting, <laughs> and they turned around and put an extra uh, an extra snap in the back, so they snapped it twice, which kept the um, the oh, helmet yeah. steady. And they do that today. Well, I like it when you said a while ago you reared up when you got close and you couldn't get past the offensive tackle. I love those guys. I used to butt them right in the chest. I didn't say I couldn't get past them. I got so close to the quarterback that I had to my raise job my hand to knock the pass My job down. was that's as close as you get. We had a guy named Johnny Unitas. I had to hire. I know that name. I had to hire a playing with seven NFL Hall of Famers. Well, I want to talk a little bit about uh, a couple of games in particular. You played in Super Bowl three, right. And in Super Bowl five, uh, you won Super Bowl five. That's by great. the way. How was the I think media? I remember you it. might remember that <laughs> by <one>. the way. <laughs> How was the media around those two games? I'm sure there wasn't seven thousand credentials of media. Well this is unique. I was drafted number one by the Baltimore Colts, number two by the New York Jets. A lot of people said, How does that work? Well, there was two leagues, two commissioners. My fifth year in the league is when they merged to become mm -hmm. one league with two, you know, national and American. Uh so we hooked up in Super Bowl three, and Joe Namath got hot, and Earl Morrill had a bad game, in all honesty, and it cost us the world championship. But in Super Bowl three, we stayed down on the beach, okay? Shula thought there was a big distraction. The Super Bowl five, the next Super Bowl I played in, they took us way out in the middle of nowhere on a golf course and stayed out there and kept pretty much the media away from us, okay? Where were those two Super Bowls held at, by the way? Miami. Miami. And the Orange Bowl. Both okay, of, both of them were held in Miami. That's All right. right. You played in some pretty big media towns as well. Uh, the Bears, especially Chicago. Mm -hmm. What was the media coverage like for the Bears and for the other teams that you played for? It was pretty simple. Of course, we had, we had four newspapers in Chicago. And they were all there. We didn't have, we had TV, but that was through CBS at that time. And they didn't do all the interviews that you do nowadays. Uh, so there, there's a lot of difference. You know, the, the Super Bowl has really helped build the National Football League and the media. You know, because they're, you know, it's fantastic what they do today. It's, uh, well, it's, it's a national holiday. You know, it's a world event. It's the biggest uh, athletic contest in the world. Have either one of you two gentlemen been to a Super Bowl as a fan and just kind of <laughs> experienced that? I know you were telling me a story about you were thinking about going a few years ago. Yeah, when the Bears went, I, I checked with the Bears, see if I get a ticket, and I could. Then I, I tried to figure out how I could get down there. Well, they had a charter going and all, and they provide you with a... Um, with rooms and all, but you want to know what the price of that was for my wife and I? Much. $11,000. And I decided I, for $11,000, I could stay home and enjoy it a lot better. <laughs> How about you, Sam? Have you, uh, Every time I went to the Super yet? Bowl, I was looking through a, ma a mask. <laughs> <laughs> you had your way paid for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all, all right, guys, we're going to, as, as we're going a, a, around and, and doing the show, we thought it would be neat to play a little trivia questions, by the way. And if anybody is, is watching us on, on our website, uh, make sure you can, you can follow along on Twitter. Tweet any questions to me, at Parmley, W-E-H-T, and uh, we'll get some of these trivia questions. Let's see if you guys know this.
this one. Our first trivia question, and I'm going to bet you guys know this one. What was the coldest Super Bowl ever played? Where? What was the coldest Super Bowl? It was in Green Bay. Well, it wasn't a Super Bowl. It was the NFL championship. The championship, yeah. That was called the Ice Bowl. The Ice Bowl, yeah. It was the Cowboys and the Packers. Bart Snarr, Bart Starr snuck right over Jethro Pugh with a touchdown that won the game. Guys it was called the Ice Bowl, but that was a world championship back in those days. Walking encyclopedias out here for this. Let's talk a little about what's going on today um, in the NFL. What's good with the league? What do you guys like that the NFL is doing right? Other than just the competition on the field, which was fantastic this year. I mean, if you like the high-scoring offense like I do, uh, the competition was fantastic this year. But what's the league doing right to improve the game? Well, they've really, they really put their act together and, and made for, a, for an excellent show for the public. I mean, as far as the games and how they play them and all. And the, even though they had problems with that Kaepernick deal and all that, mm -hmm. you know, people didn't, they talked about going away, but they really didn't. They stuck around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, you know, a question was asked me, what do you think about uh, Kaepernick? And my, quest, my answer to that was that when we played ball, you know, we were very proud to be part of the United States. And I still got, am. <laughs> and we got up there and we put our hand over our heart and we sang the national anthem and we stood at attention. Not like these jokers do today. And they, they ought to be well, ashamed of themselves. It's not uh, all of them. Most of them are first class guys. Mm -hmm. But I, that really hurt my feelings when they took a knee and then a couple other guys joined mm -hmm. them and all that sort of thing. You know, the money they make today is unbelievable. I was a bonus boy back in 1966, but, you know, that's a paycheck now, if not, not less. <laughs> now, the, the officials have been really criticized a lot this year, especially over the last week or so after that no-call pass interference Same in the year. NFC Championship game between the Saints and, and the Rams. What does the league do to make sure that doesn't happen again? Blown calls are going to happen. Officials are going to make mistakes. That's it's great. part of the game. But when you have something that... Obvious to most Fla of us. Flagrant. Yeah, that was, you know, a head-to-head, 90-mile-an-hour -head hit. That's the reason that, that replay is, needs to be effective right to the end of the ball game. Not cut out the last, what, the last two minutes they cut it out, Sam? Well, whatever. They should, you know, watch that. And the officials that watch the screen upstairs, you know, mm -hmm. said, you know, the boy gets injected from the game. It's first down, Saints. I, I hated that they missed that call because that referee was some here to your wall looking right into people. Apparently, uh, Commissioner right Goodell had the power to go back and restart the game from that moment. Uh, I don't like that idea. No, you, you, you can't do bad that. Idea. You can't do that. <laughs> no, that's bad stupid. idea. That's ridiculous. What's the biggest controversial moment from a game that you played in? In the NFL, anyone <laughs> jump automatically to your mind? Any yeah, call we let the jet, any, let any the jets that beat us. You? I got Wait, ejected uh, one day. Well, all right, tell us about that. What happened to get you kicked out of a game? Well, I started to fight. The guy kept <laughs> pulling me. It. The guy kept pulling me, and I threw him to the ground, and I tried to kick his head off. <laughs> that happened against the Rams. Did you get fined? Two hundred dollars. That's probably a pretty big fine back then. <laughs> I think yes, it was, and I think that. Um, what was his name? Um, well, who was the commissioner back then? Roselle. Roselle. I think he wanted a down payment for a new Cadillac. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, did you ever get kicked out of a game? No, I was a good ball player. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I never held, head butted, leg whipped. I never did any of that stuff. Just all legitimate blocking. All right, well, let's... That is the biggest bunch of wee-wee I've ever <laughs> heard, I'll tell you that. This is why I wanted to get an offensive lineman and a defensive oh. lineman in the game, to see you guys kind of butt heads a little bit. This is absolutely great stuff. So let's talk a little bit about, uh, obviously, the, the big game um, that's going on this weekend. We're going to get the trivia again here in just a second, but it's the Rams and the Patriots, Super Bowl 53. It's kind of the old school with Brady and Belichick, against the new school, and Sean McVay and, and Jared Goff. And I want to start with the Patriots. 
the run that they have been on with Brady and Belichick, is this the best, I hate to use the word dynasty, but I mean the Patriots are pretty close to being that. Is this the best run uh, for any franchise in the history of the NFL? I think it's more than just a little bit. They won five Super Bowls. Mm. There was a lot of guys played a bunch of years in the NFL, never went to the Super mm. Bowl. I was just very fortunate to play on one of the great Cole teams back in those days. Uh, End of story. <laughs> yeah, what, do you think um, about, what do you think about no, Belichick they, and, and, they, and Brady? They, they're a great team. They work fantastic together, and they win. They really do. But I think it's going to be interesting. This Sunday, we're going to see like a new NFL against the old. What I'm talking about new is the way they go about running plays and so forth. Uh, when the Bears hired this new coach... Um, I saw a lot of new plays, new offenses, the way they the way they did things, and I think it's going to make football a lot more exciting. Don't you, Sam? Well, the way they block nowadays, give them a steering wheel, let them run around. We used to punch and hit, but you know, <clears throat> that's all changed. They brought the hash marks in. They used to bump and run the receivers. Nowadays, you know, you take the quarterback, if you get a hold of him, man, he's raw meat. You know. Pow! You know, get a hold of him now more likely you better turn him loose or you're going to get fined or, or get a penalty. I'm going to give our control room a, a, a two-minute warning, so to speak. I want to play a, 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 a preview from our crew that we have down in Atlanta from Anthony Calhoun. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of give him a breakdown of the young and the old. I want to play that in just a second. But uh, first, let's get back to that trivia question that I asked earlier on. You guys were talking about the freeze bowl. Uh, it was 16 degrees at kickoff. For Super Bowl 16, this is at the NFC the championship. This is when they were actually still called when we're actually the Super Bowls, and that was on January the 24th uh, in 1982. Played at the former Silverdome in Detroit. The 49ers beat the Bengals 26-21. Our crack statistician and executive producer <laughs> Fred Alaga. But the, sil- the, the Silverdome was inside. This wasn't was it? at the at, at the. It was, was at Lam- it was at Lambo. It was Brett 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 This one, was, this one was at Lambo. The, the, the Freezer Bowl was outdoors. But uh, that one yeah. was yeah. indoors. Uh, that one there. I, uh-huh. Oh, they're saying it was 16 degrees indoors, so there has to be oh, come on, some kind it? of story behind that. Oh, I didn't know. Brett is telling you me right now. You threw me a curveball, honey. Brett is saying right now in my ears it was 16 degrees under the heat. It had to be out or something like that. And the silver, of course, the Silverdome was, uh, I don't, at that point in time, probably a pretty new building. I'll tell you what, the coldest we ever played, we had to go to Minneapolis the the, uh, Sunday after Thanksgiving. Minus 25 temperature. You're playing in that. Yes. Minus 25 temperature and minus 45 wind chill. How do you survive a game like that? Sweated my rear end off. I perspired like crazy. <laughs> Probably didn't realize it was so cold when you're out the, today. No, you the don't. Field. You don't. And there, and, but but uh, Grant, he didn't put any sideline heaters in. <laughs> they were worth it, darn. I mean, you were out there. It was cold. But Sam, what was I remember flying into Green Bay late in the season, and I looked out there, and there was big lakes. I said, <laughs> there are ice, icebergs out there. I said, does my mama know where I am? <laughs> <laughs> I remember wearing those brown cotton gloves, and, you know. Well, uh, the Super Bowl, the fan experience, and that's one thing that the NFL is really pushing towards, is to make sure that the fans have a fantastic time, and they're really starting to get away from those cold weather locations. Uh, last year, I know it was in Minneapolis, and they had bad weather uh, there, but this is, I believe, the second time that Atlanta has hosted the Super Bowl, and they're having a little bit of a cold temperature uh, down there this year. The good news, though, is that this game is played indoors at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And, uh, so it's going to be stadium unreal? Yeah, 1.6. That is beautiful. I believe it's 1.6 billion. It's, it's over 1 billion. We have video uh, of the stadium up right now. Security uh, is, is fantastic for this. And it should be an absolutely fantastic game. Again, the Patriots and the Rams. And uh, I mentioned a story from our good friend Anthony Calhoun, who's been covering the Super Bowl for us, uh, the big game for us all week long. Guys in the control room, let's go ahead and take a look at AC's preview of, uh, of the Rams and the Patriots, kind of a new school team versus an old school team. Let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. 
Randall, thanks a lot. Yeah, here we are in Atlanta gearing up for Super Bowl 53, the Patriots and the Rams. And as you mentioned, there are a lot of stories taking place down here in ATL. And one of them that we're focusing on tonight, you think about the, the Rams, a very youthful team, if you will, with their young quarterback and Jared Goff, their head coach, and Sean McVay trying to knock off the dynasty of Bill Belichick and Tom Brady. Let's start with the coaches. The Patriots, Bill Belichick, 66 years old. The Rams, Sean McVay, just 33. Belichick going for his sixth Super Bowl title. McVay, the youngest ever to coach in the Super Bowl. Both are great minds of the game and both ready to take home the Vince Lombardi Trophy. Obviously, a lot of attention has been paid on your age, 33, getting to this big stage. Is that right? I didn't hear that. We're solely focused on trying to, trying to win the game against an excellent football team that's been doing it as well as anybody over the last handful of years. Sean, as a coach, obviously is um, you know, responsible for the overall team. He's done a great job, and, and they're a very good football team in all three phases of the game. And then there are the quarterbacks, the Patriots, Tom Brady, 41 years of age and maybe the greatest of all time. And for the Rams, Jerry Goff at 24 was just seven years old when Brady won his first Super Bowl. My role is to play quarterback and, um, you know, that's where that's where my energy is focused. So that's probably the only thing I could do well. For this team to play quarterback. He's a tremendous player and a guy that, you know, I've got so much respect for being able to do it for so long, but, um, you know, I'll be looking forward to playing their defense and I'm sure he will be looking forward to playing ours. And Randall, how about this? Sean McVay is actually from the Atlanta area. He played high school football here in Georgia and the time when he was in his sophomore year, Tom Brady, Bill Belichick won their first Super Bowl together and guess who they beat? You guessed it, the Rams. That's it from here. What's we'll it back to you, Randall? Uh, what Tom Brady has been able to do at 41 years of age is just nine Super Bowls, five Super Bowl un ranks. Un un unbelievable. He, he's unbelievable. out of digits to put him uh, on. Uh, doesn't have enough fingers. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've only got about a minute or so left, guys. A couple of minutes. Let's talk about the game. I want your predictions uh, and, and and why. Who do you think is going to win, Marty? We'll start with you. The Patriots. Why? Well, I think they just have better, better team all the way around. I think the quarterback, the tight end, and Belichick will make the difference from what the Rams have. Sam? Well, I'm a Patriots fan, too, because I'm a Tom Brady fan. The longevity, how great he's been. He's humble, nice family guy. Um, I, I'm just a Tom Brady fan. Yeah. And uh, I played with Johnny Unitas. He was that same kind of guy. You know, he was great, but he was very humble, too. Do the Rams have a chance? I mean, this is a young team, a oh, bunch yeah, of young yeah. guys. I told you, you know, we lost to the Jets in Super Bowl three. We were 17-point favorites. I want to see if we can get our studio camera operator to, to get a nice, tight shot. You were talking about uh, winning it. Um, if we can get a nice, tight shot of that championship ring on your right hand, that is the Super Bowl five championship ring. Tell us about that game very quickly. Who did you beat? Final score. What stands out most of your mind? If you can hold your hand up one more time to get right over here to get oh. a nice tight shot <laughs> of that thing. Oh, I got too many rings every time I look up. <laughs> okay, the that's, your, that's your Pro Football Hall of Fame yeah. ring. Let's get a the shot other of the, the other, other ring, ring, ring on, the, on the right hand. There we go. That is the championship ring from Super Bowl number five. Tell us about yeah, that Yeah, there was game. 18 seconds and, and the game was tied. Johnny Yu got his... Ribs broke bad, couldn't even hardly breathe, and they put Earl Morrill in. Earl come in and redeemed himself from Super Bowl three. Earl was kind of the go to Super Bowl three. He made some bad, bad, bad decisions. It cost us some, some big, you know, yards and even touchdowns. And uh, Earl came in and redeemed himself and took us to victory. Game one in field goal. Who did you beat? Beat the Dallas Cowboys. Ooh, I was talking to you on the phone the other night. I'm a Cowboys fan. <laughs> I'll be going to church Sunday, and I'll pray for you, son. That's only two. All of I've gone all over this country, two Cowboy fans. I was drafted with them, and I don't I like know. them. I, and you either like the Cowboys or you hate them, it seems like. Yeah. Uh, just uh, as we get ready to wrap things up, um, what's your most memorable moment playing in the NFL? Is it winning the Super Bowl? We beat the uh, Cleveland Browns 34 to nothing in Cleveland. And... Uh, I was on the front cover of Sports Illustrated about five days later with Tom Matty, a running back, diving over my back. 
The play was called 34 Wham. And I remember the contentment when I got on the bus. I was the first guy on the bus. Um, we just beat, we were NFL champions. I mean, you know, here's an old country boy from Henderson, and I'm on a bus, and me and 39 other guys were world champions. And then when we won Super Bowl V, <laughs> Mr. Rosenblum, our owner, had a big gala party. All right? He owned a home down there. Tiki torches, all kind of food, all kind of goodies, all that stuff. Muhammad Ali was in the reception. Oh, my line. gosh. So when I got to him, I said, Muhammad, I'm Sam Ball, University of Kentucky. He said, Sam, I know who you are. I read the Courier Journal. I went, <laughs> <laughs> the most known man on the planet knows it. From Route 3 Airline Road, he, he knows me. <laughs> oh, that's outstanding. That's a word. That's a, you know, I remember his hand wasn't nasty like ours. It's, it just soft, 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 you know. And he had real pronounced knuckles, you know. But he said, I know who you are, Sam. I read the Courier Journal. That's amazing. <laughs> Marty, what's your most memorable moment from playing in the NFL? I suppose the most satisfying part was my rookie year, and I was awarded two game balls by my teammates for my play, and uh, that really meant a lot to me to come out of the University of Evansville, or Evansville College, however you want to call it. You probably weren't supposed to be in the NFL coming out of no. small Evansville. No, and being able to go and, and start as defensive right in and be able to play as well as what I did, and that... It really meant a lot to me. I have those balls in the house right now. They're inside a glass case. I have, I have seen those balls, I believe, in your house, yeah. doing stories before. Well, you know, I could go on and on and on talking football for, uh, with you with you guys, but unfortunately, we're going to have to wrap it up. Before we do, I uh, want us to throw this graphic up on uh, for the guys back in the control room. Of course, online, we have the digital experience all week long right here on tristatehomepage.com. Our crew down in Atlanta, they have been cranking out unbelievable digital content all week long and kind of the highlight digitally anyway has been the live streaming show big game bound it is every day at noon on the big game bound page of tristatehomepage.com and it all kind of gets started with the pregame show at 11:45 on our facebook page you can see both shows streamed live on facebook anthony calhoun is anchoring this show live from Radio Row, and it, uh, it continues all through this week, and I believe it's also going to be on Saturday leaving, leading up to the big game. And just because Saturday is kickoff doesn't mean that we're going to stop our coverage. Uh, we're also going to have a lot of stuff on the with Sunday. News. Sunday. Thank you for correcting me. <laughs> Boy. Well, you, listen, know. <laughs> you got to let these people know if they really enjoyed what Sam and I did. They need to write and call you people uh, and let you know they'd like to see more of us. Sam and I are good at this. And, well, we work cheap nowadays. Oh, yeah. we do, don't and, we? And I'm told this interview will be on our Facebook page. That it, You'll be able to watch it at any point in time uh -huh. on our Facebook page. So uh, we've, we've got it all digitally, uh, social media, and we're going to really be cranking out digital social media content on Sunday uh, leading up to the game and all throughout the game. You can catch us uh, lots of really neat stuff uh, on Twitter and on Facebook and uh, on the Game Bound page on tristatehomepage.com. Well, Randall, you notice I don't have dementia or anything. I didn't know. I, I, know that I just had to prove that to you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thanks so much for coming in tonight. Again, it's a his, pleasure. His jokes are worn out. Years ago. Well, oh, we have, but we keep trying them, don't we? <laughs> and, and, and I'll be honest, this is the first time I've had a chance to talk to both of you guys at the same time. I've talked to you many times uh, separately, but uh, it, it's been a blast. And yeah. I love the You sports. do a great job for sports around here. Uh -huh. You really, really I, do. I appreciate it, Sam. I appreciate it. Again, you really, really do this whole station. Well, I appreciate it. That's, uh, I mean, that's the guy's truth. I'm not saying the call here. It's really true. I have to put you on the payroll. <laughs> <laughs> and again, if, you, if you're just tuning in and you want to catch it all, you can see it on our Facebook page. And it, it's been a blast. And uh, we're gonna, we, we'll have to do this a little bit more often when we talk about football, bringing you two guys in. Well, we, we've got more things in football to talk about, don't we, Sam? Girls. Girls. <laughs> Rabbit hunting. Rabbit hunting. Oh, oh, big hunting. We can... Turkey hunting. Golf. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got my own golf deal for the Salvation Army. You need to come out to that. I'll see what we can do. Yeah, it's always the first Monday in June. He's looking for a Mike putter. Mike Blake come out several years ago. 
Well, then I have to. He's looking for a putter, though. I'm retiring. I'll see. I'll see what I can do. They're telling me to wrap it up in the control room. Marty Amsler, Sam Ball, thanks so much for coming in and talking about the big game with us. Thanks for everybody for watching, and we'll see you again right here on Eyewitness News with more coverage.